Hi, so in video 1358 we used uh, aluminium to make an NACA0015 airfoil. Now we used that airfoil in something called a Dereus wind turbine. Now the point of the video was the airfoil, not really the turbine, which is why I didn't discuss it much in that video. But Dereus turbines are so called because they were invented or rather patented in 1926 by Georges Dereus, a French aeronautical engineer. Now, it's fairly typical to see Dereus in the egg beater shape, which looks like this. Now, that's the fairly typical design. It's the egg beater type, and it was installed all over. So, there, uh, one was installed in Magdalene Islands, another was in uh, Quebec, Canada. You find them in Taiwan as well. Now, the kind we made didn't use that egg beater bent blade design. It uses a straight design like this, and this is called a gyro mill, most strictly, or a H-type or H-bar Darius turbine or a H-rotor. Now, there are other types of Darius turbines where those blades can be set to independently rotate along their own axis, and that's called a cyclo turbine, or you'll find them with a helical twist in them, like this one here, and that's at the Hartnell College. So you find these things made in a whole variety, but they have problems. And there is nothing without its own set of advantages and its own set of disadvantages. The Darius type turbine is actually very much cheaper to make because you don't need the big concrete tower. You can actually hold it down with guy ropes, which you can't do with the conventional turbine because the blades stick above and below the tower, whereas with the Darius type you can do. However, as they get bigger, then the stresses on the blades get greater, and so there's a limit to the size at which you can actually construct a Darius type in practical reality. So if you make a massive one, then the top of the blade is actually up in the air, and of course the bottom of the blade is very much nearer the ground, and that creates stresses along it. So they're only really good up to a certain size, but you do see installations of many smaller ones. Uh, like this one in Hobart, Australia, you can see the top of the building is actually covered in Darius type turbines. The main issue is there's a size limitation on them, but there is a massive cost advantage for what they actually produce. Now, because of the way they actually work, which remember it's an airfoil design, then they spin faster than the wind is the, than the wind being directed on them, and they're usually quite high torque, which is kind of cool. The other major problem with them is because of that faster spinning, of course, extreme wind conditions can be a real issue. And so protecting them from a, wheel, uh, a weird, um, sorry, weird or extreme conditions is one of the things to be thinking about. But one of the main limitations is they're not self-starting. You, you need to give them a bit of a kick to self-start them. Now, a common method actually is to pump a little bit of power in the generator to turn it into a motor, give them a spin when it's spinning, flip it back into a generator. So that complicates the issue a little bit in that they're not self-starting, but as I say, the main things that they have advantages on are cheapness of construction, ease of installation, and therefore cheapness of, gen of generation. The main things they have disadvantages on are, are extreme weather conditions, uh, non-self-starting and a limitation in the size. Anyway, didn't really cover that stuff in uh, the previous video and I thought I would just cover briefly a little bit about Darius type turbines. They are in themselves, uh, I think, a um, decent turbine um, design for use in small and mid-scale. Now, nobody I know is going to be building a megawatt generator, and so it, I figured it was actually a really interesting design, with the exception of that self-starting issue. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe.